Have you ever thought that certain mindsets could make you more prone to injuries? Think about someone super psyched that tries the same move again and again and again, 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 again. Or someone that has an injury after another and gets very depressed. Then there's the type that gets knee pain for drop knees or heel hooks, but is too afraid of gaining weight to do leg training. And finally, you have the people that just can't survive if they don't train all the time. Not long after I started climbing, I was warned about injuries. And this is good. We have a lot more new information now in injury prevention and management. And I think this will make a huge impact on the current and future generations of climbers. So I will try to give my contribution to this topic with the most recent advancement in psychological studies of sports injuries. Even the smallest person can change the course of the future. This series of videos will cover in-depth details of the psychological factors that favors, maintains, and hinders recovery from sports injuries. So you can really injure yourself. Yeah. But first of all, how frequent are injuries in climbing? A sport injury to be defined as such must have, firstly, been sustained during the sport activity. Then it must have received medical attention and finally must result in an alteration of the sport behavior and activity. This could be, for example, if you injure the finger that you change the schedules, climb less or climb different types of styles. So for example, you don't climb open hand or crimps anymore. Finding studies on the prevalence of injuries in climbing is not easy, but there is some data that can provide a vague idea. A survey on 201 active climbers showed that around 50% of climbers sustained at least one injury in the past 12 months. Another study that was carried out in 2006 on 187 subjects reported a mean number of more than two injuries. Furthermore, only 18% of the sample reported that they never had an injury. If those are to be the first of many injuries to come, it would be wise to find a suitable excuse. While some of the researchers show that injury prevalence and fatalities in climbers in climbing are lower than in other sports like soccer and rugby, the problem still arises. We can't hide. You understand. So, why am I, a psychologist, talking about sports injuries? Sports medicine psychology is a recently developed area and field of research that looks into, among other things, the psychological, behavioral, genetic, and social aspects of sports injury. Have you ever wondered if risk perception, personality, or even pain tolerance could influence the probability of getting injured? Well, this is just a tiny fraction of this huge research topic. This is why I'm going to spend this whole series describing the most influential model that has recently been developed. The Sport Injury Lifespan and Psychological Sequelae Model. I will cover in details all the stages that are relevant in understanding sports injuries, from prevention to retirement. And doing so, I will also provide some evidence-based interventions and strategy 
for injury management. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel or you might miss them. I would really like to thank Professor Weiss Bjornstahl for allowing me to share her model. I'll see you in the next video and stay safe. Ah. Uh. Amen.